Okay, hello guys. Uh, welcome to a new vlog. As I just mentioned uh, in the previous vlog, already a few months old, uh, I was going to try uh, to use this uh, this way of filming uh, by making a vlog and talking uh, a, a bit more often. And today I'm going to talk about uh, my BMW 320i E90. Uh, I'm just starting it up. You can see it already has reached a uh, point, I don't know if you can see it very well, uh, where I drove it for 282,000 kilometers. Fun fact, after driving this car for almost four years, I just recently found out by pushing this button, I can automatically fold and unfold the mirrors. So you're driving a car for four years and never uh, noticed that before. Hello viewers, welcome to this new edition of Guitige Filmpjes uh, vlog. I'm going to do a car talk today about my BMW 320i E90, which has done about 228,000 kilometers and uh, is going to is showing its age uh, currently. So I'm just considering what are my options and uh, what am I going to decide to do: drive this car, buy another car. Or maybe get a different uh, or get a company car okay let's go uh, I've been driving the BMW 320i as a main car for about one year now and it was never destined to be uh, my main car I always used it for shorter trips and only drove it about 20,000 to 25,000 kilometers each year well, uh, a few things changed. I uh, got a different job and that turned out to me that I didn't use the 320i uh, as a second car anymore, but used it as my main car. Which means that for the past year I drove about 40,000 kilometers uh, with this car. And as it's a petrol car, it's quite expensive to run fuel-wise. But due to its age, you can also see that it's. Uh, I have to substantially invest in uh, maintenance to keep this car running. To give you two examples, last year at 177,000 kilometers I had to replace the valve seals. It's uh, a known issue on all these car types of cars. I know for sure on the four-cylinder engines of BMW that you have to replace the valve seals at one point and I think also the six uh, cylinders have the same problem but I'm not sure. If you have any experience on these six cylinder engines, petrol engines from BMW with the valve seal problems, please just let me uh, let me know in the comments. Anyhow, I replaced the valve seals last year. Uh, it cost me 1200 euros to do so. And the next big thing was this year at, I think it was 3000 kilometers ago. So at 225,000 kilometers, uh, the ABS sensor on the rear axle uh, well broke or went nuts so I had to replace them on both sides and including uh, an oil change and several smaller uh, works they did on the car I uh, was uh, I had to pay 2,000 euros which basically you know a 12 month span uh, results in a uh, paying 3,200 euros on repairs and I think even 600 for just the service uh, on this car and I'm not going to a, a dealership but I have a BMW specialist in Amsterdam I uh, go to just to keep this car running uh, why do I go to the specialist I was quite uh, disappointed by the dealerships as they couldn't point out the specific problems uh, I had with this car and at the specialist I just said what was wrong and they just uh, made an impression and said probably will be this or that uh, the valve seals or the ABS sensors and after doing some tests their initial assessment always turned out to be right and that's for me really a, a, a sign of expertise and the BMW dealerships were just like completely guessing we have no idea what we need to replace on your car to solve your problem I was quite disappointed by that Please share your experiences uh, with BMW dealerships or specialists or opposed to BMW specialists. Uh, your experiences, please share them also in the comments as it's quite a nice 
discussion uh, with a colleague at work who drives an E65 735i, uh, 2003 I think. He uh, has the same experiences that the dealerships don't know anything about these older cars. But if you go or know a good specialist, he just can help you for a smaller price and probably will be faster to pinpoint uh, the problem. Anyhow, I had uh, these expensive repairs with my 320i and the fuel costs. Uh, if I'm driving a diesel car, it will probably save me on each kilometer four to five cents, euro cents uh, we're talking about. Well, if I'm just uh, adding it up to my kilometers which I'm driving, it adds up to, I think, one, around about 150 euros each month I save on gas by going for a diesel car. Well, you, and that's about 1800 euros each year, which is quite uh, a nice sum of money you can invest otherwise, uh, or just save. Uh, I don't mind driving a diesel engine, I'm actually a big fan of diesel engines. If you just view my channel, you can see I've driven a lot of Mercedes-Benz, BMW and Audi diesel engines, uh, four-cylinder and six-cylinders. Never had a chance to try uh, an eight-cylinder diesel. No, that's not true. Years ago, I drove an Audi A8 4.2 liter TDI, and that's uh, a V8 diesel. But anyhow, um, these costs uh, made it not a viable option for me to drive my 320i anymore uh, for at least the long distances I'm doing. I'm just driving in total 40,000 kilometers each year for my uh, uh, for work, and about 10 to 20,000 privately. And if I'm going to continue driving this on the 320i, I'll just only incur higher maintenance costs and still have the high petrol costs, which I wish to avoid. So I was looking for replacement cars. Uh, BMW 5 Series turned out to be a bit expensive. I was looking at the 530 diesel and an F10 or F11. Uh, it's a previous generation as a facelift 2014-2015 but I wasn't able for my budget which I uh, put at 20,000 euros I wasn't able to find a really good good uh, vehicle which gave me enough feel and trust to use it uh, so I just changed down to uh, a smaller generation uh, the 3 series smaller uh, type but uh, a later generation the F and F31, well not actually later generations, but instead of a 2013 to 2015 model, I was looking for a 2015-2017 model, somewhere between those years. Um, I'm quite fond of the luxury line, so I was looking at 318D, 320D luxury line cars, and they're all just around about 20,000, 22,000 euros, having run between 60 and 90,000 kilometers, which I say then there's still enough life in this car, uh, not having to incur too much maintenance costs, but uh, having at least the first year quite uh, not so much trouble with the car. Please also let me know if you agree that uh, buying a car at 80-90 thousand kilometers is a, a good thing, or maybe I should buy at lower or at higher uh, levels. My colleague again with the 7 series told me he always generally buys at higher kilometers, uh, between 150,000 and 200,000 kilometers as then most things already have been replaced and if you're buying a car with 100,000 kilometers you're probably going to incur a lot of things so please let me know if you agree with that statement uh, or not but uh, then I realized if I'm going to spend 20,000 euros on a car that's a lot that's a big chunk of my savings and having to save the same amount up again will probably take me some time and I'd rather have the money and not spending it but if something turns wrong in your life you lose your job or you have to incur big expenses around your house I'd rather have the money instead of having a car and having no money and running into problems uh, so having uh, uh, a decent fairly decent amount of savings it's not much I mean 20,000 they're gone uh, uh, can be gone for quite fast gives me a good feeling even without spending the money so I Actually, the second option, the first option being driving my 320e, that isn't viable anymore. But I rejected the second option also of buying myself a car for 20,000 euros, a new car. So I, yeah, I just basically ruled that out. But I still have to drive. Uh, so uh, we have at our company uh, a special 
forum and in this forum people can uh, that want to get rid of their lease cars because they want to change the car before the lease contract runs out or for whatever reason want uh, want to get out of their lease contracts it's a business contract but you're still as an employee employee responsible for it uh, we have this, this special forum where people can share these uh, these cars uh, and offerings and I'm always as a car enthusiast just scrolling around uh, on it but I always wasn't that fond of the cars that were offered there a lot of French cars Renault Peugeot and those aren't my type of cars but being faced with not wanting to buy uh, a different uh, BMW car I was looking at what are the options for taking over a company car uh, I'm going to tell you why I want to take over a company car uh, instead of getting myself a new company car in a moment but uh, I was scrolling through the forums and um, I basically have this uh, idea based on the car my girlfriend drives she drives a 2013 Volvo V40 D2 Summon I'm going to do a video on this car somewhere later but please don't pinpoint me on it I'm quite shorthanded on time uh, so please don't uh, pin me down on when I'm going to release a video on it I'm showing you a picture of this car uh, now but this car has the D2 diesel engine it's a 1.6 liter uh, four-cylinder diesel engine with I think it's 168 116 HP and I've been driving it this year for about 5,000 kilometers in uh, that car uh, always when we're going to drive together we're using uh, her car her car because it's a diesel car and it drives a bit cheaper than my 320i and I noticed that uh, having uh, in this type of class of car uh, having 116 HP isn't a lot but it's sufficient uh, and it's quite okay to drive so when I was browsing through our company forums, I found uh, a colleague who was offering his 2017 BMW 116D Efficient Dynamics Edition uh, up for taking it over. And uh, looking at the car, it has sufficient options. Um, it has uh, sport seats, a uh, uh, leather steering wheel, the M steering wheel. It has uh, the M gear shift lever. Uh, automatic climate control, set nav, bluetooth, LED headlights, uh, parking sensors front and rear. I just thought okay it looks quite nice option wise and having about 110, 120 HP in this type of car in this class is sufficient. So uh, I went to do the paperwork and uh, next week or in two weeks I'm going to take over that BMW 116D EDE. Uh, but now I'm going to answer your question uh, why take over this car instead of configuring myself uh, one myself uh, at my company you're responsible for your lease car if you're going to take out a contract for four years and if I'm now going to take out a contract for four years it's just too long um, especially as our leasing policy uh, leasing policy will be reworked but it's not known yet when exactly it will be reworked it can take three months but it can also take 12 months and this BMW I'm taking over has a contract that runs until January of 2021 it's about 16 months so where does that leave me it's a nice stopgap I can either wait for our new leasing policy which probably will be known by then um, and then act accordingly to it, maybe get a different uh, leasing car, a different company car, or I can just save up some more money for about one and a half years. So uh, I can still buy, uh, and then uh, by then I buy a 2017 or 2018 BMW F30, uh, 3 Series F30. Uh, And then I can save up some more money, uh, so I can just have to make this investment of 20,000 euros without it, without it hurting me really that much. And I hope then that maybe the better spec 3 series are, are also in this price range of about 20,000 euros. As the new 3 series then already will be available as a young leasing car. 
and then push down the prices of the old 3 series which to my opinion still looks very nice and for me is a very desirable car uh, well the prices for the second hand models then will be even a bit better uh, as uh, I said as the new uh, 3 series will also be available by then as a 1 to 2 year old used car so uh, please let me know what you think of the BMW 116D EDE if you uh, have driven the car yourself it's actually a 3 cylinder 1.6 uh, liter engine which I didn't realize, I thought at first it was a 4 cylinder engine but I'm quite curious uh, how that car will feel and drive of course I will make all the videos I'm generally making of the cars I drive uh, as you know from the Guitige Filmpjes channel so please let me know, uh, do you have any experience with the 116 diesel uh, in my place, what kind of option would you have done would you have driven my 320i uh, more which you've driven uh, or bought a, a 320D or 318D for 20,000 euros or which you've also chosen the option for uh, driving uh, the BMW 116D EDE so taking out a company car just please let me know what of, uh, option you would have, have taken still uh, leaving you with one question I haven't answered yet What's going to happen with my 320D, uh, 320i E90, the car I'm currently driving and which I'm still enjoying a lot, uh, especially from the options uh, it has. It has the seat heating, the uh, sunroof it has uh, and it just, just still drives very nice. I just enjoy driving this car so much and there's also the hi-fi system which I enjoy a lot always when I'm even driving, driving modern cars with just a standard sound system being it Mercedes-Benz or Volvo I still notice a difference that this, this upgrade really is worth its value anyhow what am I going to do with this 320i? Um, my uncle uh, somewhere way back in the early 70s bought his uh, BMW 2002 drove it for a couple of years and then gave it to his wife to drive it for uh, more years and then he uh, never sold the car but uh, having a big company with warehouses he just put it in a warehouse just stripped the car down uh, but down to bare metal uh, welded it but never put the car back together so I, as a small kid I would just run around in the warehouse playing and I just remember the carcass of this car standing there and about 15 years ago uh, he found the time to, and I think he didn't do it himself, but he had someone to restore the car and uh, it's now a really nice looking old timer. I'll just uh, put in here some pictures of it next to my 320i in the line of heritage there of course like the, the great great grandfather and the grandson. And my uncle not only can say from, uh, I used to own exactly the same car. 40 years ago but he can say this was the car I owned 40 years ago and that inspired me uh, regarding the 320i because my plan is to keep uh, after I receive the company 116d to keep the 320i not to pay taxes on my uh, one series uh, so not to drive it privately and use the 320i to drive privately so about 5,000 to 10,000 kilometers each year that leaves me uh, with the ah, leck mich doch am Arsch hier. that leaves me with the positive side effect that I don't need to pay taxes and I can still keep this car to drive it privately but not to drive that many kilometers on it that I have to maintain it or I have to pay a lot of maintenance costs on this car and my grand master plan is to some uh, time when I have my own garage and everything to restore this car again uh, and then I can tell my children uh, or uh, friends from when I was young this was my first BMW and it was exactly this model and this, uh, this, this example of course because if I sell this car I'll never get this back I can buy a lot of other E90s probably even with the same options same colors as this one but I can never buy my first car again so my uncle actually inspired me to, to keep this car as I it's only worth maybe two three thousand euros 
which isn't that big uh, a bigger uh, that uh, big amount of money to to keep so uh, no my plans with this cars are to keep it and then uh, keep it next to my 116D. So please also let me know what you think of this idea just to keep it next to my uh, 116D and to restore it some uh, someday in the future. Do you think this uh, the E90 will also at one point turn out to be a classic car and have this special status? So please let me know what you think about uh, all these subjects uh, in the comments and then we can have a discussion about it. And as uh, well, in the next vlog, I'm not sure when I'm going to take that one up, I'll be talking to you about the Volvo V40 of my uh, girlfriend and what I think about that car. Okay, thank you for watching and enjoy your evening.